It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Jen Cohen as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Hello and welcome to Countywide. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Jen Cohen. Today we're going to be talking about the Verde Valley Caregivers. We're going to be talking with Kent Ellisworth. He's the executive director. Also with Linda Clark, the development and communications manager for Verde Valley Caregivers Coalition. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Kent. Jen. Excellent, Linda. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Verde Valley Caregivers is not something, this is amazing. 25 years this yes. has been going on. And yet I don't think... Everybody knows about this, so we've got to get the word out today. Everybody needs to know about Verde Valley Caregivers. This is amazing. Kent, as the executive director, you're on the inside. Please tell us <laughs> a little bit about Verde Valley Caregivers. Yes, we should probably begin at the top, mm -hmm. right? Verde Valley Caregivers did get together as an organization about 25 years ago, about 26 now, almost 26 years old. And we got together because a group of people could see that there's a problem. We're having a problem. People want to live their entire lifespan here in beautiful rural Arizona. It's gorgeous. It's peaceful. It's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And But what happens during the last five years of our life, typically? That's where we're most likely to need some help. And in fact, now we know the stats show that 80% of us are going to need assistance in order throughout our lifespan, there will be a time towards the last five years where we're almost all going to need some help. Mm. So how do we live in our community of choice during the last five years of our lifespan? We can do that because people come together. That was an idea that Verde Valley Caregivers had way back then. Why not just bring people together from all over the community to help others in need? Mm -hmm. Let's work together to help each other. The big need back then, and it still is, is getting people to doctor's appointments, grocery stores, making sure they can no longer drive. See, that's one of the things that happens. Can you imagine that, no longer being able to drive? Mm. That's scary for every one of us, really. But at some point in a lifespan, we won't be able to drive. In fact, just a few months ago, we had a lady call, ask for help. I guess I need help now. Mm. I've never asked for help from anybody ever in my life. Hmm. I've been so strong and independent and I had everything all organized. But now I'm 101 wow. and I think I'd better stop driving. Wow. So, <laughs> and that, there comes a time for all of us when, when that will be in front of us. And, and so who's going to help? How are we going to, are we going to do it? So the choice for Verde Valley Caregivers back then is to organize a good team of volunteers and to be able to understand who needs help and pair up the volunteers with those who need that assistance to make sure those folks struggling during that, those last five years with mobility challenges, mm -hmm. uh, generally five years of their life, um, can get to the grocery stores, get to their primary care physicians, make sure they are, have complete access to health care. That's so important mm -hmm. oftentimes during that phase of our life, we will have more health challenges as well as mobility challenges. Mm -hmm. And if we properly manage those health challenges, it's gonna make our lives so much better. Oh my gosh. We'll have a sense of quality and well-being, a sense of peace of being able to stay in the community where our friends are, mm -hmm. and to live in our own place. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's so it's managing all of those kinds of things and balancing autonomy with safety mm -hmm. and being able to know that with Verde Valley Caregivers, with all of its volunteers, with its processes and structure, with all of its programs, we do more than just transportation. Mm -hmm. With all of that, it makes it possible for a person to live out their entire lifespan mm -hmm. in their home of choice. Right. Just like that. Home. That's a big deal. You know, most people, they do. They want to stay at home. But what do you do if you don't have kids to take mm -hmm. care of you or relatives or mm -hmm. friends or something? And then you're going to become isolated and, and things are going to go downhill from there. So thank goodness for Verde Valley Caregivers with your group of volunteers. You can get them places. You get them to appointments. You make sure that they're not isolated anymore. Someone comes to see them. Someone talks to them. I hear you even have an email buddy system. 
Yes, we do. Phone and email. And hopefully as we all kind of grow up through technology, we'll have a text buddy system all too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, but it, it's, it's a fascinating thing. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. So rather than relying on trying to construct a transit system with a, a dial -a ride buses and this, that, and the other, and I'm very familiar with sort of the transit costs. I've been in uh, older adult transit uh, kinds of issues since uh, 1984. Mm -hmm in different places around the nation. And I do know for a fact right now that a dial-a-ride system, like one of those many in, in the Phoenix area, um, costs on average about $95 an hour to operate per vehicle. Ouch. Now, do we wanna go for something like that? Or can we do this as a people, as a group, a community, working together with volunteers? That's why we always need more volunteers. Mm -hmm. We do pay volunteer mileage reimbursement, and it's a wonderful experience for these volunteers. They get to hear the best stories oh, you could, you can't even imagine how wonderful it is until you're out there really experiencing it. So it's, I'm always in favor of the community coming together, working together to solve its problems and making sure all of us can stay here in, in the place where we choose to live. Mm -hmm. And we can do that. We don't have to go off in some angle and you know bring in millions of more dollars in tax money and this, that, and the other and solve it in a way that perhaps a big metropolitan area would solve this problem. Mm. We can solve it with our own talent and our skill, our will, our ingenuity. This is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Verde Absolutely. Valley Caregivers, I think, is the solution for rural America, really, really, not just for here. Absolutely. And we've refined this whole process of transportation, of staying together with people, making sure that they're not isolated all the time so mm -hmm. they, can, they can give us a call at our call center. I need somebody to come out to visit. We'll send somebody out to visit. And so this whole process that we started way back 26 years ago, has grown in scale to now have nearly 400 volunteers serving 2,400 individuals in a given year. Wow. So the scale is really big. And we've developed all of this to the extent that last year, Verde Valley Caregivers was awarded the best volunteer transportation service in the United States. All right. Metropolitan or rural, anywhere. Congratulations. So we did it. So we've worked hard as a team of our board members and our staff and all of our volunteers working together to create the best possible program anyone could imagine. Definitely. And of course there's more to do, there always is, and we need more volunteers. And we never want to turn away from somebody who needs our help. Mm -hmm. We want those people out there who haven't called us yet, who really need some extra little bit of assistance to maintain that independence mm -hmm. to give us a call. Yeah, absolutely. And let's get you signed up. We don't charge you. We ask for a voluntary contribution. Mm -hmm. But we wanna make it possible for those folks who need us to easily ask for help and absolutely. accept the help and that's we hard have. for people, some people to ask for help. I know it's gonna be hard for me. I'm very independent asking for help, but sometimes you just, just need that. And that the services that Verde Valley Caregivers did there, it's just amazing, Linda. Now we're gonna take our first short break. Make sure you give them a call, 928-204-1238 and check out vvcaregivers.org, vvcaregivers.org, great website. Yes. Everything you need to know is on there, a list of services, a list of everyone involved, a list of how to volunteer, of course, tax things, et cetera, et cetera, all good stuff. Check out vvcaregivers.org. We'll be right back with more Countywide, so don't go away. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practice so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires.
being prepared is a part of who you are. But it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. Welcome back to Countywide. I'm your host, Jen Cohen. We're talking about the Verde Valley Caregivers today. We're talking with Linda Clark, the Development and Communications Manager for the Verde Valley Caregivers Coalition, and Kent Ellisworth, who is the Executive Director. Kent, you've been telling us all about what Verde Valley Caregivers does yes. as far as the services that it provides. Now, tell us that's got to be making a difference in yes. the lives of these people. And we actually spend quite a bit of time calculating that difference too. Mm -hmm. Being able to survey and uh, spend a lot of time with the people we're helping to understand their situation and then be able to, to understand how we've made a difference. Mm -hmm. So how has this changed their life? What really means the most to them because of what we do? Mm -hmm. And so in taking a look at that, we know a couple of things. One is that people, when they come to us, they're already, they're not able to drive. They're already experiencing multiple challenges with health conditions. So they've got lots going on in their life and isolation happens to be one of them as well. And so it's all of that struggle. So what happens after they're with us? They're able to stay in their home, living independently, balancing autonomy and safety pretty well with our help for at least five years or more after they come to us. And we also see that they say they're happier because they're able to access their primary care uh, physician in all the primary care services that are available. Get those blood tests done, pick up the, the prescription at the pharmacy with our help, um, take them to their uh, therapy appointments of any type and it's just so it's all of that so rather than calling 911 frequently they get to manage their health care through the primary care level of services mm -hmm. and that's so much better so much more efficient and, and makes them so much happier we're also we have a pet program too so oh. <laughs> imagine going through that stage and you have a pet and your pet's really your only friend your little doggy is your best friend hmm. ever and but how do you get out there and take care of them if you have to go to the hospital for a couple of days? Uh -huh. How do you make those arrangements? What if you can't afford that veterinary care? We have a program for that. So wow. we help these folks with their pets too. And we provide also a, a, a medical alert unit free of charge if they are at high risk of falling. Mm -hmm. So all of those kinds of things, those wraparound services and the volunteers and well, there's one area when we ask them what really means the most to you now, mm -hmm. it's, uh, they say, all 100% say, it's our volunteers. 100% mm -hmm. say it's the volunteer. And why is that? It's because I now have a connection. Mm -hmm. I lost my connection to the community because mm -hmm. I'm isolated, I couldn't drive anymore, and I was here alone in my home. Mm -hmm keeping in mind that over 80% of all the people we're serving are living alone. Mm -hmm. Their spouses passed away. Mm -hmm. Their children don't live anywhere near here. Mm -hmm. And they love their place. Hmm. So it's having that community volunteer come out and mm -hmm. be with them. They love that. It yeah. just just totally makes their life. And Absolutely. our volunteers love it too. Of course, new family so, members. That's right. <laughs> Brand new family that you get to choose, right, Linda? Yes. As they say, you wish you could choose your family, well, you can. Yes. Now tell us about how, how it takes to be a volunteer. I mean, that must be kind of involved, is it, Linda? Um, actually, it's pretty simple. Um, our volunteer program, you can volunteer anytime, um, and you can, uh, 
provide any service that you want. So we have a whole list of services you can choose from. You tell us when you're available. It could be a couple hours a week, couple hours a month. Um, we have some volunteers who are only here during the summer months and they help us then. So we're extremely flexible. And um, we have a thrift shop mm -hmm. um, that we need volunteers for right now. It's in Fun. Uptown Sedona. Mm -hmm. And it's a really super fun place. We Absolutely. Have Silver thr Linings Thrift Shop yeah. that's up there in Uptown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to add, Kent was talking about our pet assistance program. Well, we serve adults 18 and older and adults with disabilities. And we have a woman, I believe she's in her 40s. We've been, she's blind, she's um, visually impaired. And we've been, with our new van now, we've been able to transport her to work with her seeing eye dog in our van right. to work. And then our driver, Bill, picks her up and takes her home when oh, she's done. Super. And without you, what would she be doing? Uh, she probably would have to be at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is amazing that it's a, a free service. Linda, how is that possible? How is this paid for? Well, our funding comes from uh, three main sources, um, grant funds, um, contracts with, with cities, and, um, and then also individual contributions. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of ways people can support us. They can, first of all, you can come in and meet with us and visit our office and learn more about us and hear our stories and share our stories with your friends. You can make a financial contribution, and you can donate to our No Senior Left Isolated campaign that we're launching right now mm -hmm. uh, with a $500 donation or more. And it costs about $400 um, to provide services to one senior um, each year. Oh, well, that's very reasonable, though. I would have I would have added a no zero to that. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it, you know, yeah. as inexpensively as mm -hmm. possible. Something that would cost anyone else definitely another zero. Right. I mean, so that's amazing. So you're doing so much with so little, and volunteers definitely definitely help. So that's a, uh, if they want to volunteer, should they go to the website? Is that the best avenue, or I would should say they give you a call? Go to the website or give us a call. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have them give me a call. Mm -hmm. at the 928 mm -hmm. and we'll get them signed up. There's an orientation process and a form to fill out. Of course, we do a background check and an MVD uh, driver check, mm -hmm. and we do all of that. But it's the volume is really amazing. So we can do this just with voluntary donations from the people we serve, plus because of all the other funding we got, mm -hmm. and um, which is absolutely makes it possible for anybody who needs help to raise your hand, give us a call, mm -hmm. let us know. We can be there for you. Mm -hmm. And so it, that's so important. And guess what? This year we'll be driving about 400,000 miles wow. of volunteers. 400,000 wow. miles this, this year coming up and about 30,000 trips. Wow. Many of those trips are now outside the area for healthcare appointments mm -hmm. that aren't available here right. in the Verde Valley any longer. There you go. So we get people to Phoenix, Flagstaff, several, oh, maybe half a dozen times a week, and Prescott three or four times a week. We're down in Phoenix six times this week. Wow. Kent, that's amazing. You guys are really getting it done. Yes, Great we job. are. So we've got to take another really quick short break. We're talking about the Verde Valley Caregivers. We're talking with Kent Ellisworth, who is the Executive Director, and Linda Clark, who is the Development and Communications Manager. Check out vvcaregivers.org. We'll be right back. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit cottonwoodaz.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride.
What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> if you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. And welcome back to Countywide. Just a few minutes left. I'm Jen Cohen. We're talking with Kent Ellisworth, the Executive Director of the Verde Valley Caregivers, and Linda Clark, Development and Communications Manager for Verde Valley Caregivers Coalition. We've talked about what the organization does, provides all kinds of services on a no-cost basis, but money, this does take money. So financial support is critical, as you say, Linda. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, and that comes from the grants. It also comes from donations. And of course, uh, you cannot put a price on the volunteer hours. That's right. The thousands of volunteer hours can be. Absolutely valuable. And in fact, mm -hmm. when we do put an evaluation on the volunteer hours, it comes out to a little over 1.2 million a year mm. in the wow. value of volunteer hours that Verde Valley Caregivers coordinates to help people in need. Hmm. So that's, that's a huge value. And, and about one third of our operating budget comes from individual contributions, just people who know us, who enjoy what we do and really believe in it. This is what we need to be doing as a community, as a whole constellation of communities throughout the Verde Valley. We need to be working on this to make life better for all of us here. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and it's the grants. It's because we've developed such a strong program that now we're able to attract grant funding from national foundations and awards from national foundations. And our new Toyota Sienna mobility van was given to us by Toyota Motor Company. Oh, wow. And so it's, it's always having a strong program, the very best possible, wonderful volunteers, and we need more of you out there. We need more volunteers. Anybody that knows how to drive, that has a day or two during the week, give us a call. Help somebody. We need you now. Mm -hmm. yeah, make a new friend, too. Yes. You know, the stories that must get shared amongst all these friends it is amazing. and volunteers. It's just, it's just incredible. Now, Linda, what would you say to someone who's, who's sitting out there listening and thinking, oh, I, I might need some help? What would you say to them to, to get them motivated to give you guys a call? Please give us a call. Mm -hmm. Don't be shy. We know it's hard, but please make that phone call because it will change your life. It'll change our lives. It'll change the lives of our volunteers. And, and it will ultimately help our community, make, it, make our community better. Mm -hmm. So please call us. Yeah, don't be shy. Right? <laughs> don't be shy. Call that number. 928-204-1238-204-1238. Check out vvcaregivers.org. You can get in touch with them then. For those of you listening, 928-204-1238. If you've got questions about volunteering, if you want to make a donation, if you're someone who thinks they might need some help with it, it's just getting somewhere, having someone come visit, or perhaps the pet services, Unbelievable! <laughs> Check it out, vvcaregivers.org. We've been talking about Verde Valley Caregivers with Kent Ellisworth, the Executive Director, and Linda Clark, the Development and Communications Manager. Thank you both very much for being here. Thank you for what you're doing, Linda. Kent, amazing organization. Keep up the good work. I will. <laughs> That's all the Thank time you. we have for Countywide. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Jim.